Good morning. We're going to continue with our study in 1 Peter, which is titled about wayfaring strangers. This morning we're looking at, which I've entitled for some reason, Citizens Arrest. If you would, please turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. We will be looking at verses 13 through 17. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king is head of state or the officials he has appointed for the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. It is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slaves so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone and love the family of believers. Fear God and respect the king. Let me ask you a question as we get started this morning. And, and I, I, there's some really young people here and, and then there's us old folks. But how many of you remember the Andy Griffith Show? old Andy Griffith show you know I don't know about you but if you look back at that show I'd love to live in a place like Mary Berry I really would wouldn't you if you think about that show nobody ever dies nobody ever dies no ever, nobody ever gets seriously sick all problems are solved within 30 minutes all the problems are solved within 30 minutes. And all of this is done with no Judge Judy. They get by without that. No foul language. No explicit images. Nothing but good, wholesome entertainment. In one of the episodes so recently, I, uh, I think it was Janice who found that, that you could actually see those old shows on our television. And I was watching one of them, Barty, Barney, you remember old Barney who had the one bullet? He wanted to enforce one set of rules and play by another. As funny as this episode was, you know, many believers, I also at one time try and do the same. We sometimes try to preach one set of rules and live by another. The subject of authority is one of those sensitive issues that is often viewed with controversy. The nonconformist revolution of the 1960s, the sense of entitlement that has become prevalent in our world today, along with the widely publicized scandals in our government and the generalized moral uh, degrading of our politicians has helped to promote a popular even cool disregard for even disdain there's a lot of disgust and disdain for rules for ethics for laws those in authority and authority in general but despite these popular worldly attitudes authority remains is very important it's a very important institution to god as it ever was one that is critical for christians to understand in order to properly relate to him and to god's system of values the world changes brethren our world is changing every day. There are things that, that I see on television now that I thought I would never see. There are things that are happening in our world that are startling. But you know what? God's Word 
God's word never changes and it never goes out of date. Or it doesn't evolve with the conditions of society. The Lord doesn't change his commands because society starts doing this or the other. We're called, brethren, by God in many places in Scripture to submit to authority. This includes the authority of the elected officials, the authority of those who keep our laws, the authority of the family, the authority of the church, even those who we allow to have authority over us, such as employers, supervisors, and I could go on and on with the list. In today's world, authority is sometimes a nasty word. It brings with it thoughts of corruption, unfairness, power struggles. Authority can just cause us sometimes to get our hackles up. You know, our rednecks to even get redder and stiffer. But if we read scripture, if we believe scripture, and apply scripture to our lives, God's word clearly says that we are to follow our leaders. Today, though the words of the apostle Peter, we will look at why we should submit to authority. In this text, Peter is talking about submission. Submission to authorities in government, submission to bosses. He goes to talk about submission to family and to the church. And in context, he is saying, even in suffering, we are submit to those who, those in our lives who are placed in positions of authority over us. When people look at Christians, they shouldn't find those who are slandering their leaders or standing in riots to overthrow government, even in the case of injustice such as persecution. And you might be saying right now, preacher, you just don't understand my boss. You don't understand the things that I deal with. Our elected, elected officials are just unfair. They're harsh. They're even sometimes stupid and ignorant. I need you to remember from our prior teachings in 1 Peter that Nero, Nero was on the throne. And Christians are being thrown to the lions. They're being burned at the stake. They're killed for their beliefs. You would think that would have been just the time to fight back. But that is not what Peter teaches the Christians to do. He tells them to submit to the unjust authorities and leadership. In this passage, we will learn why we as Christians should submit even to unjust authorities and see how they should be known for their submission. We will discuss some ways of standing up and helping to make changes in the, a way that honors God in the conclusion. Why should believers submit to the ones in authority, even to unjust authorities? Believers should submit to authorities to honor who? Honor God. If you got your Bible still open, look at verses 13 and the first part of verse 14. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. The first reason that believers are called to submit is because of who? It's because of the Lord. All authority is instituted by God. Peter says we should submit for the Lord's sake. This is the reason that believers should demonstrate submission and, and lives even in both the good times and bad. Why? Why should we do that for the Lord's sake? God's word says that all authority comes from and originates with God. He is the absolute source of authority in the universe and has delegated his principle of authority to mankind to maintain order in this world. Romans 13, verse 1. Everyone must submit to governing authorities, 
for all authority comes from God and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Romans 13, verse 1. God's word says clearly that all governments and authorities are ordained by God. Good question here. Does that mean that all governments are godly? Or good? No. Sometimes God uses evil governments for his glory as well. Go back again to verses 13 and the first part of 14. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials that he has appointed. Brethren, I think we need to underline some things here. All means all. And it includes government, it includes bosses, it includes families, it includes the church. So we see right here in Peter's writings that we are submitted to all human authority for the Lord's sake because he has ordained all authority. The next thing that we are to submit because of the job they do, verse 14, the latter part of verse 14, if you have your Bibles, follow with me. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. You know, I, I don't like all the laws. I don't like all of the rules. In my job at work, I still have to deal with laws. Some of them are downright stupid. Some of them are there for only one purpose, and that is to extort money from businesses and others. It doesn't mean that I like them, but the people in my life who are called to make those rules and laws are doing a job that is planned by God. We live in a democracy. Really, more fitting, we live in a republic. No one person makes the law. The laws are created by our elected officials to protect us. Unlike some dictatorships in the world, our laws are made by many people with human rights and safety in mind. The ones who keep the laws are called to enforce them. They did not make them, but they did take an oath to uphold them. Rules are also there for the protection of people and believe it or not, even the church. Without rules, without laws, what we have is anarchy. Everyone just doing as they please. And we know from experience, as well as God's word, that when that happens, it's not long before the wheels fall off of the whole deal. So we're to submit to all human authority for the Lord's sake and submit to the law and rule makers and keepers because of the job they are called to do. The next we are to submit to, to silence foolish people. We are to submit to silence foolish people. Verse 15, it is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those who ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. We covered this a little last week. The world is doing what? It's watching. They want to see if we as believers are the, re are the real deal. They want to see if we walk the walk when we talk the talk. Back to our illustration from Maryberry. Barney wanted to enforce the laws, but he did not want to be bound by them. We, are believe, we as believers are being watched to see if we're living what we say that we believe. Many in this world think that all Christians and believers are hypocrites. And when we break the laws, bend and break the rules, rebel against authority, cause division, dissension, and confusion, we're proving them right. We are to follow the law so that when they look at us, what they see is someone who is striving to be more like Christ in all that they do. And prayerfully, they will see the difference. 
and hopefully they want to have what we have. Next, we are to submit to authority because we have been freed for the penalty of our sins. Verse 16, for you are free, yet you are God's slaves, so don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. When we accepted Christ as Savior and baptized for the remission of sins, our past mistakes and sins are forgiven. Scripture says that we are free, but with freedom, with freedom comes responsibilities. We have received salvation not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has done. But it is very irresponsible for us to use our God-granted freedom to cause others to stumble. There is no doubt we are free, but in gaining our freedom, we become servants. We become slaves to Christ. Our job is to share the love and the light of Christ with the world. In our words, actions, and our love, when we use our freedom to do as we please, we are not fulfilling our purpose. We are confirming the unbeliever's idea about all believers being hypocrites. And we're showing the world and our Lord in the process that we are more important than God or his word. And that we sometimes feel we are superior. We want everyone else to follow the rules, but we want to do it ourselves. So we are to submit to authority for the Lord's sake, to submit to all types of authority for the job they are called to do. We are to submit because in gaining our freedom, we have become servants to Christ and must fulfill our purpose. We must submit in order uh, to show our respect and our love for God, for the unbelievers and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. First part of verse 17, respect everyone and love the family of believers. Part of respecting others is not leading them astray. When we as believers break the rules, break the laws, and rebel against authority, what we're doing is disrespecting God and we're disrespecting the unbelieving world. And you might just sit back here in awe and just say, how? How, how in the wide world can that be? not placing enough value on them? How many times have you tried to teach the gospel to someone only to hear, I used to go to church, but this person or that person did something or said something or acted one way at church and another in town. They did not practice what they preached. When we don't submit to the authority in our lives, we show the world. We show the world that it does not really matter. And we also show our brothers and sisters, some who are just infants in Christ, that God's word says it, we say we believe it, but in reality, it doesn't really matter. Jesus says we are to love as we are loved. And he says, if you have me, you will do what I say. If you love me, you will do what I say. What's he say? If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And he says we are to follow the rules. And Peter wraps up this section with these words in the latter part of verse 17. Fear God and respect the king. Fear, as we have studied, is not the type of Freddy Cougar fear but of, or of great big spiders. What kind of fear Peter is talking about? Respect, reverence, and awe. So let, let me wrap this up this morning. We're called to submit. Not submitting shows disrespect for God and his word and can and does have drastic effects on our credibility, our witness, or those as we try to bring to Christ. Our testimonies. Failing to submit lets the ones who talk negatively believe that they are right. We are free to serve God and do that, we must show love and respect to all and reverence to God who created all authority in the first place. 
let me let me leave you with this. There may be times when the ones in authority ask, tell or order you to do things that go against God's word. We're to submit first to God, then to men. And if the laws and rules of men contradict the rules and laws of God, we are not commanded to follow them. But be aware, we may suffer the consequences of our actions. Peter himself, as well as Paul, were in prison. Daniel was chunked into a lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into a fiery furnace. John the Baptist was beheaded, and Christ himself was crucified. But all drew a line. They followed the rules, except when those rules were against God's word. Listen, they're never, they never sinned in not following them. We have a way of making changes, brethren. You and I have a way in making changes, and it's called prayer. Pray for your leaders, and then vote for those who follow God. Almost it seems impossible to find someone that follows God that there is out there to vote for. But we need to be prayerful for our leaders. You know, brethren, we as Christians, we have the greatest inheritance that anybody could possibly imagine. I don't care what your status in life is. Your father, if you're a Christian, he created the world. He owns everything. Everything that you and I have belongs to him. We are wayfaring strangers. We're foreigners in a foreign land. This is not our home. And God created this world. He created the authority figures, the good and bad. And he asked us to follow their authority as long as it does not coincide with his rules. Brethren, it's marvelous that our God is such a loving Father that he is willing to go because I don't know about you, but I mess up a lot. To have mercy and grace is a wonderful thing. But we should strive to glorify and honor his name and truthfully what you and I are here for as Christians is to help others to see Christ through us. If you're here this morning and you've never confessed his name, I'd ask you to seriously consider that. Be buried in baptism and raised to walk in the newness of life. Remember to whom you belong and strive to live a Christian life each and every day. If you're here though, think how sad it is if you had that you had such a great inheritance and you decided that you knew more than God did and you tried to live your own, your own way. We do that a lot too, but brethren, God will forgive. All we have to do is to ask him and then strive to follow his will. If you're here this morning and you have need of the invitation, won't you come while together we stand and sing. A great day coming, there's a great day coming by and by When the saints and the sinners